no decision has been made at this point uh, by the president about uh, an, uh, a ban an import a ban on importing uh, oil from Russia is the supply of oil so important that it's acceptable to cut deals in some cases with countries that may have engaged in unsavory actions in the past is it really worth doing business with a despot like Nicolas Maduro to drive down gas prices can you guys think that asking Saudi Arabia or Venezuela or Iran is reducing our dependence on foreign oil? Well, the White House not exactly committing to banning Russian oil as it faces backlash over alternatives. It could mean potential imports from our friends in Venezuela, Iran, and Saudi Arabia. But Bloomberg is now reporting in the last couple of minutes the White House will ban oil imports today. Republican Congressman Jim Jordan joins us from D.C. Congressman, good morning to you. Good, to be, good morning, Steve. Good to be with you. Okay. It, it's important that we send the message, but what's going to be the impact? Well, I, I, think the, I think this legislation will pass today. We should ban Russian oil, but, but that's only part of the equation. I mean, it's only half the equation. The, the, the real answer is let's increase production here. And understand, we're in this terrible position because of stupid policy decisions from the Biden administration. You all know this, the, the canceling the Keystone Pipeline, not allowing drilling on, on federal lands, not allow, uh, keeping Anwar open. Uh, those are the things that need to happen. So we've got to focus on that side of the equation. But here's the problem, Steve. The left doesn't want to go there. Even if Joe Biden wanted to go there, his party won't let him. I sat in a hearing a few months ago where Ro Khan, a Democrat member from California, the state that's now got like seven dollar gas, yeah. he had the oil and gas executives there in front of him, and he badgered every one of them, asking them one simple question: Will you pledge to decrease production this year? I mean, the Democrats want seven dollar gas, yeah. so th that is the biggest problem. Uh, the Democrats and Joe Biden. The Democrats have had this agenda for a long time, but Joe Biden, as soon as he came in last year, you know, they started this very aggressive climate agenda. So here we are with $7 gas, which is going to have people, obviously people are going to drive less because it's costing them a fortune to fill up. But what happens when it's $8 or $9? I mean, that could happen. There's some suggestions that oil could be 200 bucks a barrel in no time. Yeah. It, again, I come back. That's what the Democrats want. I sat in the hearing. In fact, I asked that question when Ro Khanna got done with badgering these witnesses. I said, do you guys want $8 gas? And the truth is they do, which I, for the life of me, I can't figure out because what that means to middle class families, how that hurts our economy, how that hurts the uh, drives up the price of everything because you got to it takes fuel to move goods around the country. So it, it's complete craziness. But that's where the left is today. And unfortunately, they have complete control of the Democrat party and Joe Biden I think is afraid to stand up to him that's why he's talking to Saudi Arabia yeah. and Venezuela and Iran for goodness sake that's right and our White House reporter asked Jen Psaki about and hey, why are we talking to these people from other countries when we could be doing it here we had uh, the governor of Alaska on our air last week and he said look I'd love to drill more but they just won't let us they've, they've got so many regulations so those three companies yep. are Venezuela Iran, which is going to get a nuke deal out if they give us more gas, probably. Uh, that's my opinion. But And then Saudi Arabia. And how interesting is this? I'm sure it's just a coincidence that as we go to Saudi Arabia and we ask them to give us more oil and gas, this is the same time they've we have decided we're going to send back a guy, the so-called 20th hijacker, yeah. from Gitmo after 20 years uh, because he doesn't need to be in Gitmo anymore. Yeah, I mean, go, go figure. I mean, uh, you know, Shazam, we're going to release this this terrorist, this prisoner, the same time the President of the United States is asking Saudi Arabia to increase production. I mean, th this is this, this, the thing that just drives, I think, Americans crazy is, remember, just 14 months ago, we were energy independent, and now we have the spectacle of the President of the United States begging OPEC to increase production, talking to Iran, talking to Saudi Arabia, talking to Venezuela, instead of doing the common sense thing, which is, let's increase production right here in the United States. Let's open Anwar. Let's have the Keystone Pipeline. Let's allow drilling to take place. Let's recognize the value of the internal combustion engine and oil and gas, for goodness sakes, and how that helps our economy and how that helps middle class families. But no, the left won't do it. Well, Jim Jordan, you heard Kamala Harris yesterday. It's time for you to buy a Prius. Oh, golly.
Oh, God. Yeah, tell that to the farmers and the people in western Ohio and the country who, you know, drive pickup trucks everywhere, for goodness sake. That, that's what the left always misses. They think everything's about this elite atmosphere and the big cities on the coast, and they forget about middle America that actually works and makes things happen every day. And they are paying an extra $3,000 a year now in higher oil and inflation, according to this new poll that just came out. Jim Jordan, thank you very much for joining us today from D.C. You bet, Steve. Thank you. All right.